Yumi. I love fantasy stories, and I want to share a special one with you today. Have you heard of The Little Mermaid, The Princess and the Pea, or maybe even The Snow Queen? They're all written by my favorite author, Hans Christian Andersen. These stories are what sparked my love for the fantasy genre. To help me tell the story, I'm going to call some of my friends. Oh, teen reading ambassadors! Hello, Kemi. You called? Hi, friends. Will you help me tell a story today? Oh, hello. Sure, Kemi. We'd love to tell all of you a story today. I'm Hannah. I'm Avin. I'm James. And I'm Javesh. We are teen reading ambassadors with the National Library Board, and today we'll be sharing one of Kemi's favorite fairy tales with you. Do you enjoy shopping for new clothes? If so, you might enjoy The Emperor's New Clothes, a story about a foolish, greedy emperor who gets his just desserts. After this story, you're going to check yourself twice in the mirror before ever going out again. So, without further ado, please sit back and enjoy our rendition of The Emperor's New Clothes. Once upon a time, there lived an emperor who loved new clothes. He wasn't an emperor in the traditional sense. He didn't really care about his citizens and never attended any official meetings, unless it was to show off his new clothes. While citizens of other kingdoms might be heard saying, Ooh, the emperor is sitting in his council. What the citizens of this kingdom always said was, Ah, the emperor sitting in his wardrobe. Now, strangers often visited this kingdom to sell beautiful clothes and fabric. One day, a mysterious weaver arrived who claimed to have great skill in making garments. Come one, come all! I am the greatest weaver in the kingdom. I can create any garment out of any fabric. If you can dream it, I can do it. But something you must know about my clothing is that only people who are worthy will be able to see it. If you look upon it and are not worthy, you will see nothing. The emperor heard about this weaver and was immediately enthralled. If he ordered clothes from the weaver, he would be able to tell who among his people were worthy and give them the best jobs. And so, the emperor dug deep into the kingdom's treasury and paid the weaver a handsome sum of money for his new outfit. The weaver came to the castle and set up his sewing machine and began work. Or began to pretend to work. In reality, the weaver did nothing at all. The servants assisting him were all deeply puzzled. The weaver seemed to be working incredibly hard, but no one could see anything being made. Finally, after days had passed, the weaver gave them a task. Servants, get me your finest cloth and your most delicate silk. I must have it if we are to make the finest outfit in all the land for your emperor. But when the weaver received the cloth and the silk, all he did was hide it away in his backpack and continue to pretend to sew late into the night. Days had gone by and the emperor was growing impatient for his splendid new clothes. As he was busy selecting another outfit for his latest party, he sent his advisor to check on the weaver. The advisor hurried off to the workroom, where the weaver was pretending to be hard at work. Upon seeing the advisor, the weaver got to his feet and presented his workstation with a flourish. Wise advisor, you must be here to see the Empress new clothes. It is not quite complete yet, but here, have a look and tell me what you think. The advisor stared hard at the weaver's empty hands. But of course, there was nothing to be seen. Still, remembering the weaver's words that only the worthy would be able to see the new clothes, the advisor thought to himself, Oh dear, I can't see a thing, not a thread or a stitch. But I certainly cannot admit this to the weaver and reveal that I am unworthy. No. I must compliment the weaver's hard work and show that I am fit to be the king's advisor. It's wonderful! What exquisite patterns! What divine craftsmanship! The emperor will be very pleased with his new outfit. The weaver bowed humbly as the advisor left to update the emperor on the progress of his new clothes. 
as soon as the advisor was gone, the weaver demanded from the servants for the softest velvet and the thickest wool. Just as he had done before, he stored them away in his backpack. Now, word had spread in the kingdom about the emperor's new clothes. Everyone was curious about the garments that would be able to distinguish the worthy from the unworthy and demanded that there should be a parade so that they should see these clothes for themselves. The emperor, always happy for an occasion to show off his clothes, was more than happy to agree. With a week left to the parade, the emperor decided to pay the weaver a visit himself. Upon seeing the emperor, the weaver once again got to his feet and bowed deeply to greet the emperor. Your Majesty, you must be here to see your new clothes. It is not quite complete yet, but here, have a look and tell me what you think. The Emperor thought to himself, I cannot see anything, not a thread or a stitch. Surely, this does not mean that I am unworthy to be Emperor. Even my trusted advisor said such wondrous things about the outfit. I must not let it be known that I cannot see my new clothes. Out loud, he said, What an incredible outfit! What immense talent you have! I have many clothes from many lands in my wardrobe, but I have never had anything like this before. Smooth as river silk, like the colours of the first blush of spring. I must reward you for your time and skill. I shall dub you Royal Taylor. I am honoured, Your Majesty. I will require a few more materials before this outfit is complete. But once it is, you will definitely be the talk of the town. The Emperor agreed to give the weaver whatever he desired, so long as he made an outfit fit for a king. As soon as he left, the weaver, <clears throat> now the royal tailor, called again to the servants. He asked for the biggest jewels and the heaviest gold bars, and as he had before, stored them away in his backpack. The day of the parade arrived, and the emperor waited nervously in his chambers, accompanied by his trusted advisor. The weaver arrived, carrying his backpack and holding out his arms as if he was carrying the most precious of jewels, though of course, no one could see anything. He said, Behold, your majesty! My master work. I have slaved for many days and nights over this. It is as light as a spider's web, so much so that you would think that you have nothing on. But that is, of course, the beauty of it. Please, tell me what you think. The advisor, now in front of his emperor, thought only of proving his worth. So he said, Royal Taylor, your majesty, I have never seen a more beautiful outfit. The people will cry and shout with joy at seeing you. But the Empress still could not see a thing. He thought, Even after a week, I still cannot see a single thread on this outfit. Could it be? Am I really unworthy to be Emperor? This is the worst situation ever! Although out loud, he said, it is even more than I imagined, Royal Taylor. I will wear this with pride. The weaver bowed again and then checked his watch. It was time for the parade. And finally, the emperor would be able to put on his new clothes. The emperor removed the clothes he was wearing and the weaver pretended to hand him each piece of his new outfit. The weaver tugged and pulled on invisible hems and sleeves. And upon stepping back, sent the emperor off to the parade to show off his new clothes. When the townspeople first saw the emperor, they were stunned. Where were the emperor's new clothes? Or were they all so unworthy that they could not see it? Worried that mentioning that they could not see anything would reveal their foolishness, all of them crowed and cheered. What amazing clothes, emperor! You've never looked better. Until suddenly, a small voice piped up. But he hasn't got anything on. Was that little Joshua? Actually, I can't see anything either. Why? The Emperor has no clothes on at all. 
And so, as the advisor had predicted, the people began to shout and cry in joy and laughter at their emperor, who had no choice but to continue the parade. As the emperor looked out into the crowd, he thought he saw a lone figure walking slowly towards the city gates, loaded with a heavy backpack and an unused sewing machine. The end. Well, Cammy, how did you find our story? Did you enjoy it? I love fantasy stories, so of course I did. I hope I'm never going to be like the emperor or his advisor, who had too much pride and vanity to tell the truth. We hope you've enjoyed listening to our story. See you next time!